Hey, Henry Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So I've got a really fun build this week. I've got some wood bits here, and I want to try and challenge myself to make a wooden robot completely out of wood. That's right. No Gundam parts, no plastic greeblies, uh, no guitar strings, no final faction parts, no lids, no containers, just wood. 100% wood. So <laughs> I don't know. Let's try it. All right, here are the wood bits that I got. Some of these I found at a yard sale, some of them I picked up at my local hobby store, but I think these are gonna work perfect. Now, I want the body to be split into two sections so I can have a little spacer there, and I'm just scribing some lines because I can get the straight cut on the saw. So I'm just kind of carefully lining these things open. Man, working with a saw and small pieces of wood is, uh, it really can get your heart going here, so. Um, Use little tools if you got them to help hold things for you. But I got this split into two parts and this will be the chest. Now where the waist is gonna go onto the chest, I need to cut out these grooves. I don't really have the right tool to do this, so I did this the best I could. And you can see it's kind of working. It's a little bit um, uneven, but I'll have to sand that out and I think that's gonna work okay. Yeah, that'll work. So here's all of my parts cut, and I'm going to start doing a ton of measuring. Um, really, a lot of this is getting the holes in the correct spot so everything is balanced properly, um, sanding all the rough corners here. So woodworking is really interesting because you're doing a lot of just meticulous, tedious work. The sanding and my fingertips are like killing me because uh, it's so much sanding. But here I've got the shoulders drilled out and again, some really precise measuring. And I used my drill press so I could drop the hole the exact same size on both pieces. So when I cut my pegs, everything would still line up and be completely even. So here's the shoulder going into the upper part of the chest. That looks pretty cool drilled a hole through the waist. Again, I used my drill press so I can get a nice straight hole all the way through. If you're using a hand drill, chances are it's gonna drift on you up or down and parts are gonna go weird. Uh, I've done that in the past, so. All right, everything's lining up pretty nice. I was gonna use just one disc for the head, but I thought these two discs look a little bit cooler. It's a little bit more volume. So I'm going ahead and I'm gonna glue these together but I don't love the seam that's around the edge there. So what I did was took some wood filler and I just filled that, let it dry, sand it down. And it worked out pretty nice. It was not that hard to do. My buddy did some laser cutting for me and man, if my channel ever blows up, I'm totally getting one of these things. They're awesome. So here's all the little greeblies that I laser cut. And the wood that I used was a little thick and I think it stands off the body a little too much. So what I'm gonna do is just take them and carefully sand them down so they're a little bit flatter and it'll have a little bit low, lower profile. And I think that looks a lot better and it's a little simpler. I took some glue on a lid, just dipped them, the parts on, and then carefully with some tweezers lined them up. I did have a line drawn there so I could get them as straight and as even as possible. It, it is a little hard because the glue dries super fast. I'm using CA glue, um, and so it's drying super quick on me, but it's working. So here's the other shoulder, and I just wanted to show you how I did the bottom part of the shoulder here. I did a little angle cut and glued that on there. I felt like that gave that shoulder bit a little bit nicer transition into the bicep. So just gluing that on, aligning it, I have a, a couple of seconds to rearrange things, but not much. I drilled some larger holes in the bottom of the shoulder there, and I'm using this little bit larger dowel as my bicep. That looks pretty cool. Now this is where I wanna have a little gap in between uh, the body, just to give it a little bit more volume. So I'm building this little frame. The reason I'm building this frame is I didn't have a piece of wood that I could actually cut down to size. So this is gonna have to do but there's the gap, so I think that looks pretty great. 
and I'm just putting a little bit of glue on there, lining it up. And again, I'm trying to get it lined up as perfect and as even all the way around as I can. And I'll glue this onto the upper portion of the body. And this gives me a nice separation, some nice volume, almost like there's some electronic components inside. So I really like that. Now for the feet, I had these little discs, so I glued them on just to give it a little bit more shape. And I'm kind of just dry fitting it now because I want to see how everything's coming together. And I feel like the feet are a little bit flat. So I went ahead and took this additional piece of wood, carved a little heel in there, and I'm gonna glue that on. And I think that'll give just a tiny bit more volume to the shoe and make it look a little bit better. Now for the hand, I drew this up about, oh man, probably 15 times. I couldn't really figure out the fingers and the shape and how I wanted to build this out of wood. Um, and I'm just using a small little wood saw on my workbench. But uh, I think this worked out. I really, what ended up happening was I was drawing it over and over and I said, you know what, I just need to cut some wood and figure this out. And ends up, went through some trial and error, but I figured it out. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually gluing the finger on and I'm using the other part of the finger that's not glued yet to help keep everything aligned just because I want to make sure everything fits as nice as possible and have that finger kind of coming around almost like it's a fist. I'm actually stealing a little bit of glue there for the tip of the finger and then I'm aligning that. I'm going to make these arms really long so the knuckles will actually be just dragging on the ground. Um, so yeah, this actually worked out okay. There's uh, the rest of the fingers and then the thumb. I actually glued it on here. I ended up hating it as the more I worked with it. So you'll see later on, I popped that off and removed it and put it in a new location. Just putting on some additional greeblies. I need to line up the waist in the chest. So I drew these two little center marks on the front and back. And that will allow me when I have the glue to actually line it up and visually see that it is lined up. So I'm getting that glued on there. Got the front and then the back. Now I have these giant gaps from what I was cutting originally on the saw. So I'm just gonna take some wood filler and fill that all in. And with a little bit of time and care, you can actually get it to look pretty nice. I found that wetting my finger, I could smooth that out and it looked really sharp and clean. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Now I'm adding just some little touches here and there. I took a little dowel, cut it, sanded it down just to flatten it out. And again, these are just little touches. I don't want to go overboard with the Greeblies. I want it to be pretty simple. Now in order to put the neck on, I need to find the center point of that. So I did an X, I did some crosses, and then I had the circle template that's the exact same size as this little disc that I'm gonna glue on. So that actually worked out pretty great for me. I think as you're building, Keep an eye out for tools that can help you simplify your, your process and your workflow. So I'm kind of just building out the neck where I have like a collar, maybe a neck component and then another collar that the head will rest on. I'm gonna use a wooden dowel to hold the head on and I'm gonna drill down into the body. That way I can actually swivel the head back and forth and it'll have a little articulation. And I'm just gluing on some additional little greeblies on the back there. And that's looking pretty good. For the head, I went ahead and cut a small piece of dowel and sanded it down. Got like a little eye there. And I think this is almost ready for uh, priming. I did have one additional set of numbers on the other on the other leg that I forgot to put on, but got those on, masked everything. And I masked it so I didn't get too much buildup where the dowels wouldn't fit in my hole because they're pretty tight fits already. You can see the wood grains there still. So I'm going to clean that up with some wood glue. And then I did a coat of baby blue paint. I kind of went back and forth on all the paint scheme colors. I wasn't sure what to do, but talked with my wife and she gave me some ideas. And I think this turned out pretty cool. Just laying down some simple color schemes. Again, I don't want it to be too crazy. I wanted to, I kept thinking I want it to look like an old antique Japanese toy. I, I don't know why I kept thinking that, but after painting it, it felt a little bit flat. I was like, 
it's not quite right. I wanted to keep it really clean. I didn't want to do my normal black wash over the whole thing and it looks really grungy and dirty. So I thought, well, if I do this really delicate chipping all around the edge, I think that will still give me that kind of Japanese toy, tin toy kind of feel that I was going for. I mixed up some yellow and white because I wanted a like a, a softer yellow for the numbers. I think that turned out really nice. And again, this was kind of some collaboration with my wife. She's like, oh, what if you did like some soft yellows with that blue, that'd be really nice. Doing some additional chipping. And again, this is a dark brown paint. And I'm thinking it's looking really great. I did forget to put my antenna on, so I'm gonna use this toothpick, drill a little hole, and I think we're gonna call this one done. Okay, this was a really fun challenge. And as an artist, I like to look at other artists and see what they're doing. And there's this one artist that I met at DesignerCon. His name is Dan. Um, his Instagram is Tinkerbots Workshop, and he does some amazing stuff. Uh, him and his wife are such nice people and just super amazing. So I was looking on his website or his Instagram, and he makes these really cool robots out of found parts and things like that. He uses a lot of wood. And I thought, I wonder if I could do something like that. I've never really challenged myself to just do something completely in wood. And I think sometimes as an artist, getting yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone and trying something new actually helps expand you and makes you a better maker and creator. So I challenge you to go out there and do something that you've never done before, even if you're afraid of it. And... Yeah, this thing turned out pretty cool, so let's do some turnaround shots of this thing, and as always, it is a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.